I hope this book isn't expecting something without dinner first. Hey there everyone, Afrodo Reviews here, bringing you another book to determine. Is it worth reading of a second breakfast? Or does it deserve the fiery pits of Mount Doom? So let's decide. Today's book is a Harlequin detective novel that only known as Snow Job. And just for clarification, even though I made the joke, this is not a uh, risque title, actually. It's actually based on a slang word meaning to, as it says, a deception or concealment of one's real motive in an attempt, in an attempt to flatter or persuade. So, yeah, as, as, as much as it's fun to pretend it's that, it's not that. Snow Job was published on September 22nd, 1995 by Ted Woods as part of the Reed Bennett Mystery Novel series. This is the ninth book in the series, from what I could find. And for the most part, it was it's a series that I guess is well-liked. I think it comes mostly out of Canada rather than the US, but this is the only one I read and it directly takes place in the US, so I'm not sure if it's just a common theme that this Canadian detective ends up in the US. Now, I've already mentioned before that I don't really like starting series, any kind of series, at from the middle, I'd rather start from the beginning and work my way through. However, this is a detective novel, and for all the faults I give detective novels, they are at least always written with the idea that you can just pick up anyone in the series and read and basically understand what's going on. And it's not always the case, and you'll definitely appreciate the book more if you've read all the books before this, but for this case, I don't really feel like I missed out on anything in the previous works that they constantly reference in this one. Apart from that, there's really not much else to talk about this book when it comes to the the background or anything. So I'm just going to move on to where I'm going to go ahead and show you the ratings that I found elsewhere. And with that, we'll go into where we always start, the cover. Now the cover of this, it, it's hard to be critical of it because this is a Harlequin novel. Harlequins are often written and produced very cheaply, so in a sense, when I look at a Harlequin novel, I won't necessarily hold it to the same standard as... I wouldn't really hold it to the same standards of, you know, a book I'd buy online that's meant to be a more expensive paperback. As it stands, even with that in mind, it's okay. I mean, it shows a mountain in the background, a skier clearly going off to do something... Uh, he's wearing gloves. One of the ski thingies is covered in blood that you would only notice on a slightly closer inspection, giving you a bit of entry on it. But other than that, there's not much else to say about it. On the back, it's basically the same mountain but mirrored in Photoshop with a opaque white background put on it and then the synopsis read to you. All in all, it's, a fair, it's an okay cover. Again, I wasn't expecting much from a Harlequin with how the production works. To be perfectly honest, I think I like it a little more than this other cover I found while looking, because I'm not sure this tells me much more about the book either. Now the synopsis of the story. This one is fairly simple. Um, if you've seen my TBR, you know that I read out the synopsis out loud, so you would understand what I'm coming to with this book. However, for this one, this this synopsis is fairly simple. Uh, by the way, link up ahead just so you can see the TBR. I would recommend seeing it so you can see what I'm doing, some of the changes I've been making to the channel, small things like that. The synopsis is basically that a Canadian detective named Reed Bennett is called down to Chambers, a Vermont ski town, to investig to help his friend Doug, who's been Doug Ford, who's been charged with murder of a young woman he's been seeing. Now, the common perception throughout the town is that he would that Doug was cheating on his wife with this woman. However, Doug claims that he was actually only merely pretending for that. So no one would get suspicious and he was actually investigating a big case that he doesn't want to tell anyone else because he's afraid of what will happen if he does. It's a bit wonky in my opinion. There's really no reason for him to keep this secret as long as he does something that's even lampshaded in this book. The reason he keeps it secret is weird, especially after a certain point, but it, it's one of those. It works fine. And basically the, the tool, the, the thing was, he was working on a investigation where he found out that a New York mafia was attempting to use the Chambers Bank to launder a bunch of their money. However, what he thinks is it's one of the big guys trying to steal from the main mafia group, which is why it's so hush hush. Let's move on to the review. Now, if you didn't see my TVR, just a quick fair warning. My, I'm changing up how I do reviews a little bit in the sense that I'm no longer going to be separating it specifically into 
what I liked and what I didn't like. I'm doing this because I feel like it'll let me more freely talk about the book without having to make myself talk about good things while also talking about bad things. I can just talk and talk about what feels most natural for that moment. I think it'll help me with the flow. I think it'll just help me in general. So that's fair warning from now on. But to get into this, this book is a perfect example of how just subverting your expectations or the common tropes of this media, of the detective novels media, does not automatically make your book good. Now, this is a problem that a lot of people have with certain works in the in mainstream, is that a certain director will get in there and they'll think just because they didn't do what everyone expected them to do, that suddenly makes the work better, when in reality, it doesn't. Now, with this book, when I first started reading it, I was actually really impressed. I, I found it very refreshing that this book, one, ditches the girl of the week trope. Uh, I've made it no secret in the past, especially with my murder in the Hearst degree review. I really don't like the girl of the week trope. It, I find it's boring and it robs character development of most of the characters. But there's also the fact that Reed is both a charming and likable guy without constantly being told he's just charming and likable. He doesn't necessarily feel the need to be this big macho guy who's always getting one up on everyone. He's willing to pretend to be sub be submissive towards certain people just so he can catch them off guard when he turns around and catches them with their pants down effectively. He We also get to see that, not merely be told that constantly. We also have a loyal character who wants to do right and not merely be as a stepping... Not merely because he wants to be the judge of the town... But he also legitimately wants to do right by the town and help the town. He's not a blood-sucking lawyer. Don't get me wrong, there's still a blood-sucking lawyer here. But he is introduced and a major character. And I personally enjoy that the lawyer was shown with some nuance beyond just, I'm a blood-sucking lawyer who's representing a famous person in town who I think is connected to the murder. There's even a couple unique additions here, like Reed's canine partner, Sam. As that was a good way to introduce new life into this world by introducing a detective with a canine partner. Something we don't often see in this in this kind of genre. Normally it's either another partner or something like that. They're typically lone wolves, if I'm being completely honest with you. But if they do have partners, it's typically another man that they've worked with in the past. So in, when just seeing that can, the canine partner is there, that's definitely a good good sign of good things to come problem the problem ultimately comes though with all the things that wood subverted he forgets to replace them with interesting things to hold that that position this book actually did make me appreciate those tropes a little more because i realized that without those tropes there's nothing much interesting to read and this book is a perfect example of that yeah there's no girl of the week trope but his wife who he has a kid with is barely present within the story Yes, he's smart and capable of talking his way out of situations, but because of that, there's really nothing interesting that ever happens. Every time it looks like something is gearing up to happen, he just talks his way out of it. And that's fine when it's smaller thugs and stuff, but when your big climactic arrest is just him saying, hey, no, stop, I'm going to arrest you now, good boy. And it's just, okay, yeah, I mean, that makes more sense in real life, but it's just one of those, that's not a very interesting thing to read. The good lawyer character, yeah, he's refreshing, he's got a decent personality, and he's not perfect, but at the same time, it's clear that without him being a blood-sucking lawyer, Woods didn't know what to do with him. So, after about halfway through, once he'd lived up to his purpose, the dude just vanishes. You don't ever hear about this lawyer, Maloney, until the very end, when all of a sudden he's needed again to represent people. So, it's just one of those... There's a lot wrong with this book, and there's a lot that really needs to be changed up. Now, I'm not going to say it's bad, because it's really not. In comparison to most of the other detective novels I've read this year, I would probably argue that this book is probably in the top five, the top two or three. Um, it wasn't nearly as bad as The Feral Detective was, which made me want to... which just I had to quit reading. It wasn't as boring as The Da Vinci Code, mind you. Or even really, the, it was less, it was more boring than Murder in the Hearst Degree, though, because at least Hitch had a personality that, although grading, was interesting. Because I'm not sure I could tell you much about Reed's personality overall because of the subversion of the expectation. But one of the other things I will say, all of those books had that this one did not, 
was at least the mystery was there. Because problem with this book is that it does not hold up its mystery at all. And what I mean by that is there's not, no, there is stuff that's going on, except that pretty much at all times, everyone knows what's happening. We kind of always figures out who the guy is immediately. They always kind of know that they always basically know the motivations that are being done with the mystery being, okay, what are these few minute things that we kind of need, but don't really need to link up together. We are, we always know who is the bad guy in that scenario. In, in fact, the most interesting part of the book was about two-thirds of the way through where it seems like the guy they had fig fingered as the big bad. By the way, this is going to be a spoiler because it, it's the only way I can talk about this. Well, the guy they had figured to be the big bad suddenly self-terminates in his car. But it's obviously a stage self-termination. So, but it's obviously stage. It wasn't really, it wasn't really a self-termination. So Reed and Doug start to think maybe there's something more going on. Maybe something else is happening. Only for it to be revealed. No, no, the, the, that guy was actually responsible. He just staged it to look like he committed self-termination. When in reality, he just self... He, he dealt with a guy who came down to check on him from the main mafia headquarters. And basically threw his ID on them. And that's basically it. it there's no mystery at all in this book except for a few chapters and then even then it's not that interesting of a mystery and because of that i think even woods realized that near the end because out of nowhere a character that had been otherwise a side character and had even been helping them suddenly reveals oh no i was in on it the whole time and it so literally comes out of nowhere that i just stopped and said wait what that doesn't even make sense there's nothing building up to that there was no hint this character was involved in the slightest. In fact, some of the actions he takes in this book don't make sense if he's involved. So it's just one of those, it's a boring mystery that tries to do a Shyamalan twist at the end, twist. but fails because it didn't build up to that. And the worst part is, it had built up to a twist like this, just not with this character. But the problem is with that twist, twist I'm specifically referring to that he could have done, it probably would have had to been. It would have probably have had to make Reed not as smart and insightful about certain people as he would have been, and that would have been fine. Just say he got the wrong read of the guy. But what you did was not better. In fact, it was arguably far worse. And you know what? Maybe this book might have squeaked by with a more favorable review, even in light of all I've said so far, if it was at least written well. And it's not. I mean, I mean this objectively in a sense that the writing itself is bad, not necessarily I just simply found it bad. And while there's a couple typos here and there, they're not really worth mentioning in comparison to the two things that I found the most annoying. The first being how he writes dialogue. Now, for the most part, the dialogue seems fine throughout the book, but occasionally the dialogue will just simply not separate. Basically, one character will be talking, and then in the same paragraph, without any break, another character will suddenly start talking. And because of that, because the rule of thumb, you always want to separate dialogue unless there's a reason. Like an interview with a vampire, or a Lord of the Dead. The dialogue in those books weren't always separated, but that's because the entire book was one long monologue. The reason they weren't separated is because they weren't the ones saying it. The person saying it was talking already so you don't need to separate them to show someone else is talking in fact keeping them together reminds you this is a story being told this book doesn't have that excuse this book is in the moment and <clears throat> and for my point it, it, it throws you off when he does this because whenever it does it you like immediately loot first you're immediately thrown out of the situation the second is if you don't notice it all of a sudden the dialogue flow has been interrupted and you're like wait wait why are you talking again and why isn't he talking why, why was there a page break for you to keep talking and even does that a couple times a character will say one sentence and then suddenly then it will suddenly next line and the character will keep talking when in reality he could have just sentence slight descriptor keep going with the talking but that's the other thing is the more noticeable and worst thing about this book is that it does not handle time conveyance well. And this was a problem I had with Night Flight, and I'm starting to realize, is it just a problem with bad books in general that they don't know how to convey time very well? 
in the sense that this book tries to keep a consistent flowing narrative, but at times entire hours or days will pass in a single sentence. And not a page break either. Like literally, I went to bed, it'll be like this, I went to bed, I woke up the next morning, or I went to bed, two days later we, it it would just continue like that and you'd have to stop and say, oh wait, okay, so it's two days later, really? What, what, did nothing happen in those previous two days with noting? In my case, whenever you do a significant time skip, you really should always, par- you should always paragraph break, at the very least. That helps people realize, oh, there's been a significant time that has passed. One of the worst cases of this is, in my opinion, when Reed is going to sleep on the couch, and all of a sudden he just wakes up in the middle of the night because someone's sneaking up on them. There, there's no new chapter or anything. He literally just, I laid down on the bed. All of a sudden, I started awake as I heard Sam barking. Because it just, it, from a reader's perspective, it literally looks like that. I started to go to bed. Oh, wait a minute. I'm awake. That's how it feels in, in a layman, in, in a more simple term. It's just one of those, you really should be more careful about how you convey your time. Make it more clear. And at the very least, use the tools of writing to show that a time is passing. Another slight issue with the writing was words would often repeat things. And I've made this complaint before how things will repeat information. No, no, no. I don't mean it this one. This one actually treats you like you're smart and understand the information provided. In this case, I mean he'll repeat certain sayings or phrases over and over and over again to the point that I actually was thinking about starting a drinking game with how often it read in the book says, my blood runs cold when he realizes a new piece of evidence for the case at hand. Like he, he does it so often, especially in this span of a few paragraphs in the middle that it's just hard not to notice. I looked over the picture and my blood runs cold. I listened to what he said, my blood run cold. As I read the, the evidence file, my blood run cold. And it's just one of those, dude, find a new saying. Like at this point, I, I think you're an ice man. Okay? No one's blood should be this cold. Yeah. All around, I think this book's about a 4 out of 10. <laughs> Originally, okay, so it started a lot higher. Originally, I was going to put it at maybe 6 or 7 out of 10. But then as time went on and it became more and more boring, it fell quickly to about a 5 out of 10. And that was going to be a score for the most part. That is almost what I had settled on as I was finishing the book. But then that sudden twist out of nowhere just completely threw me off to the point that I didn't want to give this book anything more than a 4 out of 10. It wasn't well built up, and this is a detective novel. This is supposed to be a book where you give hints at these twists. Twists aren't just supposed to come out of nowhere. They're not satisfying that way. I I know I mentioned in in the City of Bones how you have the two types of twists. The one that gives too much information and the one that gives no information. And neither of them are good. If I had to pick one of the two, if you don't have any other option to do one of the two, I would always say go with the too much information rather than the too little. Because too little doesn't feel like a surprise in a good sense. It feels like it's it's the equivalent of someone running up to you and gut punching you and saying, ha, you didn't see that coming, did you? And it's like, yeah, no, but it doesn't mean it's suddenly good. Whereas this one, you see the guy running at you, ready to gut punch you. At least you're prepared for the gut punch. That's probably not a good metaphor, but I can't think of anything else right now. So I'm going to continue on. I will find, I will eventually find a good detective novel, but unfortunately this wasn't it. And based on how it's written, how there's no real mystery and how, you know, the objective issues that I had with it, I can't personally recommend it to anyone else pers- either as well. I, I, I would recommend some of the other books I didn't like and threw in here well before I recommend this. Like if you want a detective novel of all the ones I've read check out Murder in the Host Degree so far. That's the best one I can suggest off the top of my head. So yeah, without further ado, goes into Mountain Doom. The time must go on, and I'm hoping that with my next book, I'll be able to break the Arctic Code and find a good book inside. But until then, remember, with every book comes an adventure, and every adventure is worth having, even the bad ones. Hey, and don't remember, I'm still doing the book giveaway, guys. Sign up now, you're running out of time. Video link in the description and up above. So yeah, check it out, sign up, get a free book known as Beacon 23, my book of 2021.